Good evening and welcome to a special joint meeting of the Northampton City Council and the Northampton School Committee. I'm uh, Mayor David Narkowitz here in my capacity as chair of the Northampton School Committee. I'm here with City Council President uh, Bill Dwight um, from the City Council. Um, and we are gathered here tonight in this special meeting pursuant to Article 4, Section 4-6 of the City Charter. Uh, this is a joint meeting that's required uh, and it's convened for the sole purpose of filling the vacant Ward 2 School Committee seat. Before we begin, I'll ask the clerk, uh, Laura Judd, to call the roll of this joint meeting. Mr. Jesse Adams? Here. Ms. Maureen Carney? Uh, present. Mr. Bill Dwight? Here. Ms. Lisa Klein? Here. Ms. Marianne Labarge? Present. Mr. David Murphy? Here. Mr. Ryan O'Donnell? Here. Ms. Gina Louise Shara? Here. Mr. Paul Spector? Ms. Blue Duvall? Present. Ms. Pam Hanna? Present. Ms. Ann Hennessy? Present. Mr. Downey Meyer? <coughs> Ms. Lisa Minnick? Here. Mr. Howard Moore? Here. Mayor David Narco? Present. Ms. Carrie Nikorchuk? Here. And Mr. Edward Tejas? Present. At 16. <coughs> okay. So we have, uh, we have a quorum. Um, and uh, I should also announce that this meeting, as is custom for uh, school committee and city council meetings, is being uh, both audio and video recorded by Northampton Community Television. Um, the order uh, for the meeting, you have an agenda in front of you, and uh, I want to thank the council president for working through this and uh, developing this agenda for this evening. Um, we have three um, residents of Ward 2 who have identified themselves as potential candidates, uh, Laura Fallon, Jason Foster, and Renee Wetstein. And uh, the order in which we will conduct the meeting is we have reserved a uh, period of three minutes for each candidate to give an introductory statement, and then time is allotted following <coughs> that introductory statement for uh, members of either body, the city council or the school committee, um, to ask questions um, of that particular candidate. And we're roughly allotting about 10 minutes for that uh, period. Um, then the meeting, um, once those presentations are complete, uh, we will then um, accept nominations from the floor. Uh, we will then close nominations. And then the process will be um, a roll call vote of the joint committee. Um, wherein each member of this joint committee will be asked to state the name of the candidate that they favor. Um, uh, if there is not a majority, uh, if, if no candidate secures a majority on that first round of voting, um, then the person receiving the lowest votes uh, will be eliminated, and then there will be a second round of voting, um, at which point uh, uh, we will hopefully someone will secure a majority. Um, I should note that given absences, we have 16 people here tonight. Um, so the majority would be nine votes. Uh, uh, exactly. Right. Yeah. So, uh, so nine votes uh, constitutes a majority. Um, okay. So uh, we are, uh, the order in which we've, we're asking candidates to give their three minute statement, we are doing it by alphabetical order. So, um, so the first uh, candidate that we would uh, ask to hear from this evening is Laura Fallon. And if you could just uh, step to the podium and I will, um, I will have a timer and just keep the, uh, keep the three minute timer here. And um, whenever you're ready, uh, uh, proceed. I'm really happy to be here this evening and I'd like to explain why. A few weeks ago at the Parents Forum hosted by Superintendent John Provost, I heard many parents voicing their concerns and asking questions related to the curriculum, student teachers, and differentiated instruction. Thanks to my background in education, experience working on the override campaign, and perspective as a parent of four, I was fairly confident that given the opportunity, I could have addressed the majority of the points raised. This realization was the driving force behind my decision to be here this evening asking for your consideration. After sending you all a letter highlighting my relevant life experience, I got to work preparing myself for the question and answer period, which is to follow our presentations tonight. I studied the budget, the cherry sheets, every single document pertaining to the school committee that I could find on the Northampton Public Schools website, 
and I can assure you there are a lot of them. <laughs> I read the superintendent's entry plan, his blog, and all of the school handbooks. I also familiarized myself with the current course offerings at the middle school and high school, and with the services being offered both within our schools and our community in general. I reviewed the common core standards, the understanding by design framework, and reread differentiation in the brain. Next, I read books like the Essential School Board book to be certain I understood what the role of a school committee member is, what the open <coughs> meeting law applies to, and to learn which practices are common to highly functioning school boards. When I got to the point where my eyes were crossing, I watched Waiting for Superman, Stand and Deliver, and footage from past school committee meetings. <laughs> Finally, I spoke with as many parents, teachers, former school committee members, and neighbors as I could to hear more about their experiences, viewpoints, and concerns as they relate to our school district. What I learned from all of my research is that despite inadequate state funding, changes in leadership, and other challenges, our school district is in a really great place. We have a school committee that has already adopted most of the best practices for governance that I read about, a responsive superintendent with a clear vision and plan, dedicated, talented teachers, and a supportive community. And that is why I'm really happy to be this, here this evening. I come to you secure in the knowledge that every decision being made is with the intention of enhancing student learning. I'm assured that we are focused on slowly but surely improving upon past successes and are honing in on those areas that still need work. There's nothing I would like more than to share in that work with you. I offer my talents, experience, and considerable energy to help you on this journey and pledge to work as hard to prepare myself for each school committee meeting as I work to prepare for this evening. Thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> so do you believe uh, we should? I think, I think it's appropriate actually as each candidate pre presents that we do the questions there so they can be directed to the yeah, candidate specific that, instead yeah. of. Okay. So. Uh, sorry. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> All right. So, um, um, Mr. Moore, do you have a question? So I, yeah, the question is, um, so what is the job description of a school committee member? Um, <laughs> so you're supposed to obviously appoint um, appoint leadership, in this case a superintendent, and then allow him the responsibility to, to make decisions and hire and to be kind of the, the person overseeing the decisions and, and checking off what they're doing. But really, a successful school committee would give him the freedom to do the job that you've hired him to do, um, to serve as um, the voice of the members of your community. Um, and represent their interests when they have questions, um, obviously to approve the budget um, and face the fact that come spring or early summer, you're often not very popular with a lot of members of the community based on some of the tough decisions you've had to make. Okay. Thanks. Other questions? Oh, Councilor Carney. <laughs> uh, I'll start off by thanking you very much for uh, offering to, to serve on the school committee, um, it's, uh, I know it's very short notice for anybody who, and I'll, and I'll give that thanks to all the candidates who, who offered themselves to, to be considered tonight. And um, so I just uh, find that this is a helpful, since you brought up the decision making, and this was a question I was uh, asked when I first ran for public office, um, but one which I think is, is an important one to consider. Um, if you should find that there is a very controversial issue uh, before the school committee and about which you've heard a lot of um, information from your constituents in Ward 2 and you find yourself actually um, philosophically <coughs> opposed to that of what you seem, what seems to be the majority of the opinions of those in your ward, um, how would you uh, how would you make a decision based on that dilemma? Yikes. <laughs> um, and I can think of two situations that already um, have come up that I've thought about. Gosh, what would I do? Because watching the footage, you see your friends and neighbors up there with tears in their eyes because they feel so passionately about a cause. And I thought, oh, I could be the person that has to say, I'm sorry, I don't agree with you. Um, and so I think in that, in that situation that really it's your job and obligation to, to, overall you're looking out for the interests of every child. 
um, in our school system, and um, and you're you're doing it with as much knowledge and objectivity as you can, because I think that a lot of these issues tend to get clouded by emotion, where um, it's too you're too close to your own child and wanting what's best for them to truly see the the big picture sometimes, and I think that it's our responsibility to see that big picture and to represent the needs um, the needs of all of the students. I hope that answered it appropriately. Council LaBarge. Yes. Um, thank you. Um, I know it's very difficult when you have to get up here like this and talk to every one of us on school committee and city council, and it's not, and it's not an easy job running for an elected official position. I know we've all been through it, but I have a couple of questions to ask you. Could you please describe any volunteer or other work you have done in the Northampton Public Schools, including which schools and the kind of help you provided or work you've done? Um, so my primary volunteering experience has been at Jackson Street School because um, I have three children there. My oldest just moved on to the middle school, so I haven't had much of an opportunity to get involved over there. Um, I have I've been on a lot of class trips. I've been to the marsh about six times now, the Barrett Street Marsh. I went on a class trip yesterday to Child's Park. Um, I have been in. I've done everything from helping teachers that didn't have the time to um, laminate materials and cut them out so that they could use them for the students during the rest of the, um, the afternoon to um, going in for um, students when they present their poetry. They call them publication parties and they'll present nonfiction or poetry or any other um, type of work. Uh, gosh, I have volunteered to organize a um, adults only kickball tournament to raise money for nature's classroom. Um, it was last year, it was the first annual this year. Um, they, they did that again. Um, I expect I'll be running a few more as I have three more children to send to nature's classroom. Um, really, I, I haven't taken on the big, I'm not president of the PTO. I just, they, teachers know to come to me when they need something done and I'm kind of the person who they call at home and says, we need help tomorrow, can you do this, can you do that? And I'm there, so. Also, could you please describe any experience you have or interest in the school budget issues? Um, I'm sure the mayor probably remembers when I suggested um, a few things at the um, override campaign first meetings. And I feel like I've learned a lot since that first meeting where I showed up so full of idealism and I thought I had the answer to solve it. And he said, we're not going to bake sail our way out of this. And I thought, oh my gosh, he's been so patient and so was the rest of the school committee. And, and welcoming me despite the fact that I clearly didn't really have a clue what we were up against and that process really was eye-opening um, walking from door to door with leaflets canvassing the neighborhoods I actually I think that I was completely unaware of the true diversity that exists in our city it gave me a much broader <coughs> perspective of how something like an override impacts every member of the community and um, I you know, nobody's saying that they don't support education, but it was truly putting people in an awful, awful position that had, didn't have the resources to pay any extra money. Um, and I feel like th that experience makes me realize that with the budget, it's, a, it's an absolutely enormous responsibility that you're spending money that people have entrusted you with and they expect you to be responsible. Um, and that, that you, know, you, can't be, you can't take that responsibility too lightly in any case. Hennessy. Thank you. Um, you're a parent of four children, and in the Valley, we as parents have a lot of choices of where to send our children to school. And I'm wondering briefly if you could say why you chose Northampton Public Schools for your children. Um, you know, we never, we never considered not sending them to public schools. I'm a, I believe very strongly in a public school education, partly for, for the reason of diversity. Mm -hmm. I was schooled in a, in a middle class parochial school where everyone believed the same thing, looked the same, parents' paychecks were the same, it was a cookie cutter neighborhood. Um, and I always felt like I was being deprived of, of, of some experience by not having any other viewpoints or any, anything else. Um, and if, had actively sought that out um, in my experience. So that was very important to us, the diversity. When I hear my kindergartner coming home talking about her friends, it sounds like a UN meeting. 
you know, Olivier told Tarek that, you know, Katiana said that Aaliyah, and it's, it's great, it's fantastic, and she is learning so much from her classmates about different cultures. Um, and we have, an, we have an amazing school system. I wouldn't have considered sending them anywhere else. Sure, Ms. Duvall and then Mr. Sahowski. Um, I want to thank you for, for also coming in. I, you've described your volunteer work within the schools. My question for you is, um, how long have you been going to the forums and how long have you been interested in the schools as a process? Because this position all of a sudden came up and yet there, it could have been, you could have run for the position, you know, when it was open. So I'm just kind of wondering, why now? What opened that you wanted to do it? Is it because there's a positive issue that's going on or a negative issue? Is it because there's an issue that, that, that pulled you in in the first place? And I mean, you did mention going to the forum. I saw you at a forum just the other night, and I mean, it was wonderful. But I'm wondering, how long has this been a process for you? Um, my youngest just started kindergarten in September, and that's really the driving force where I, I kind of spent the summer trying to decide, am I, am I really able to go back to work full time with my husband's job and my four kids? And realized after a string where each one got sick and it was two weeks that someone was home that it was absolutely impossible for me to get to go back to work full time. And so I thought, what can I do that would be fulfilling? I mean, I'm already in three book clubs. There's really not much more available in the city that I can do that's intellectually stimulating. Um, and I'd always had an interest in school committee. I, I've badgered. Alden Bourne at, at cocktail parties and uh, Jim Young when he was serving and I've always been interested in it but it's always been kind of from a peripheral view because the you know I had four kids under five for a while there I just I couldn't thank you very much Mr. Zahowski, and then I'll just remind folks that we're coming up on the 10 minutes that we allotted for this questioning. I know it feels like, you know, a minute. Yeah. Um, in the letter that you sent to Mr. Dwight uh, sharing your interest in being considered for this position, um, I saw that uh, you had mentioned that you were, you were bilingual and uh, speak Spanish, and I just heard you speak about diversity and how important it was. Um, I was curious as to how you see your skill as being bilingual in Spanish as an asset to your position uh, on the school committee and also how you might see that helping you as you, um, you represent your ward too <coughs> in Jackson Street and, and beyond. I, I just I feel like you know just showing up at these meetings there there may be people who are very interested watching from home but to actually to have their voice heard, they, they need to go to the superintendent's office and get an interpreter, or they need to come here and get an interpreter. It, it'd be so nice if we had people that were out in the, on the playground, at the fields, that if, if you have a question, you could just ask. You don't have to make this a very intimidating. This is very intimidating. If, if you don't speak the language, it's even more intimidating. Um, and so I feel like that's it was it would just be something where on your web page you could say that we speak Spanish and it'd be as simple as you don't have to go through an official channel send us an email in Spanish call us in Spanish with your question um, and I think that that would do a lot to be more representative of our entire community and that that would really open up communication Thank you. okay um, uh, we're just at the end of the 10 minutes, but I'll defer to my senior colleague. Super quick, <laughs> self-serving, personal question. You said that you were doing interviews for Rice University. Are you an <laughs> alumna? I am. I am. Go Rice Owls. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank I you. Yeah. There are many, many, many. Oh, I didn't oh. know that, or I would have capitalized. Councilor Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> very, very quick question. If you're successful this evening, we run for re-election in a year. You know, I, I honestly, I don't, I'm not one of those people who's going to think beyond getting through the next 30 seconds of my 10 minutes. Um, I, I, I don't know. It'll depend what the experience is, is like. I'd like, I, and it depends. Yeah, I, I'm not, I'm not a politician. So if there are 15 other people running and I've had a bad experience, I don't, I can't promise anything. I would really like to be a part of this. I've got kids in the school system for the next, uh, 12 years, but yeah, I, I'm not going to promise that I will run, uh, but I'm very, very much open to it. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. All. Thank you again. Okay, so now we'll move on to the second candidate, um, Mr. Jason Foster. 
Mr. Foster, you, um, whenever you're ready, I'll start the timer for your three-minute presentation. I wasn't an owl, but I was an Emory Eagle, not too far. <laughs> <clears throat> Thanks for allowing me an opportunity to make my case for becoming a member of school committee. I have no doubt any candidate sitting before you today would be an excellent choice. From my perspective, this decision should be about which skills you feel would best complement the existing members. I'm here tonight to distinguish myself from the other candidates. Why should you vote for me to represent the citizens of War II in our quest to provide the best education to our students? Because I have a different experience and expertise. Research and common sense suggests the most effective and successful for-profit, not-for-profit, and governmental organizations yield the best results when their members have unique and diverse ex experiences and expertise. As a board member of the YMCA and in pursuit of my own businesses, I have also found this to be true. School committee is no exception. Our current committee consists of knowledgeable and professional people, yet room for a different expertise. Budgets and efficient use of funds can have one of the largest impacts on the quality of education. For many, discussing money is laborious, boring, and uninspiring. Not for me. I love it. Weird maybe, but I've dedicated 25 years to figuring out ways to stretch revenue and minimize expenses. This includes contract negotiations, procurement, operational efficiencies, employee benefits, and strategic development. My unique work experience can enhance the current skill set of the existing school committee members. We all see the pattern of diminishing revenue while the needs of our students continue to increase. Schools in the Northampton face a complex set of challenges, including the late start time at NHS, an extremely important issue, and like many, stopped in its tracks due primarily to the lack of funding foiled by money again. I won't have all the answers, but I will use my financial disciplines and insight to collaborate and help develop practical and real solutions. The current administration has worked tirelessly to provide the best education given their limited resources. They deserve as much assistance as possible to tackle the fiscal challenges facing our schools. My knowledge can provide additional support and I will personally advocate for funding. I'm not just about numbers. As a martial arts instructor to children ages 5 to 18, I'm fortunate to have insight into the often overlooked areas that impact their classroom experience. This includes bullying, focus, respect, economic hardship, self-esteem, and emotional stability. For nearly a decade, I've worked with hundreds of children from all socioeconomic environments with varying intellectual and physical abilities. I hear their perspective directly from the students and their families. I believe it's imperative for a school, a school committee member to share their passion while at the same time maintain an objective focus supporting all students throughout the city. I vow to energize initiatives but not at the expense of any segment of Northampton's learners. For all the TV viewers and citizens of Ward 2 on their behalf, I would ask the Mayor, City Council, School Committee to vote in support of my candidacy until the residents of Ward 2 have a chance to cast their own votes in the election a year from now. In return, I promise to bring my expertise and passion to objectively represent the interests of all students. Best of luck to the other candidates, and regardless of the outcome, the citizens will be well served. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you very much. And again, I'll open the floor to questions from uh, members of uh, the City Council or the School Committee. Are there questions? Yes, Sniper Chuck. Mentioned in your uh, letter that you had, letter that you sent, that you served on the board of directors at the YMCA. Um, how do you think that may have helped you or prepared you for uh, sitting on the school committee? Well, I certainly wasn't prepared when I was serving on the board of directors. Uh, it consisted of about 22 different personalities, very strong personalities, very knowledgeable people, experts in their own unique way, and. We had to learn how to collaborate. We dealt with some very controversial issues, one of them being the purchase of Camp Norwich, which was um, very frowned upon, and there were very few people that were in favor of it. So through collaboration, through communication, through research, and lots of meetings, we ended up working and coming together as a group, and I was one of the driving forces of the Camp Norwich purchase. So from that perspective, I feel like for six years dealing with such a diverse group of opinions, and everybody was a great addition to the board, 
Um, it, I think it did help prepare me. The other piece was um, I was elected by my peers to serve as the vice chair of that board for three of my six years. And I felt that that maybe was an indication that I was able to collaborate and work well with, with the other members. Thank you. <clears throat> Councilor Dwight. Um, both Ms. Fallon and you, and I'm pretty sure uh, Ms. Wetstein uh, uh, referred to the financial and fiscal constraints. Um, it almost goes without saying, but I'm glad people do say it. Uh, and then recently we actually had to address um, what was identified essentially as, as a fiscal crisis of sorts, and that the mayor lobbied for successfully ultimately for an override. And um, I'm just, and I and I should have asked this of Ms. Fallon as well, but it seems like we queued up on the questions. But what was your stand on the override when it was presented? I voted yes for the override, but with a lot of frustration. I felt that um, I would have liked to have seen much more advocacy to preserve whatever funds the schools had. To me, it felt a little bit like gambling with education, and. Um, by that I mean if it, if it failed, there were some serious cuts and it was going to be very detrimental to the education in Northampton. And I just felt that that wasn't a risk I was willing to take. I supported it, but I just, I personally would not have even had that as an option on the table. I know that there's a huge complex set of issues surrounding the budget, uh, but I just felt that the other $50 million would have been more prudent to look to alternatives than cutting <coughs> education. Can you expand on the alternatives that you were considering? Um, well, during my campaign a year ago, I had talked about the health care system and how that there could have been some additional expense reduction in health care. I think what the mayor did was fantastic, but there were other ways to possibly shift some of the expense of the health care into the private sector. Um, there were other areas in the budget that I thought that um, could have had maybe a little more scrutiny. I counted, I want to say, and I'm just trying to remember, that there were approximately 34 or 36 people categorized as clerk, assistant clerk, um, all essential positions. But perhaps we could have gone to the community and said, hey, are there volunteers that may want to answer phones or staff administratively or possibly consolidate them? The city has a lot of different administrative bodies. And if there's a way to consolidate, to realize some operational efficiencies that may be worth exploring. I mean, these are some of the things that I've done personally in business that I've seen success with. I'm not saying that that's necessarily going to solve everything because it probably won't. But I think there's ways to look at the way we run administration <coughs> as a city, and perhaps there's some savings that, that can be had in at, rather than at the expense of our education. Because I just feel education's too important to to risk. Councillor Klein's been waiting. Uh, oh, to ask sorry, Councillor Klein. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> um, thank you also for running. Um, I understand your um, your business acumen would be a real asset to this uh, to the school committee, but I'm also wondering about your views and thoughts about education, and I'm really curious to hear what you think about the Common Core standards, what you think about MCAS standardized testing generally, um, those kinds of questions and issues. So s specifically, uh, let's MCAS. From my perspective, these tests are great to have to establish a baseline, but f I personally believe unless we have a real plan to affect the numbers, they're just tests. So when I've looked at some of the MCAS results in the data, I'm not seeing large swings in one direction or another. They seem to be more or less consistently remaining the same. And I think that in order for those tests to really have any impact, it's really about what do we do once we see the results? How are we changing the policies at the school in order to affect those tests? So, I mean, from that perspective, I think all those tests are generally the same. Can you address the Common Core as a concept in, in uh, education? Well, it's interesting because my, my eighth grade son at JFK is one of the people that's affected by the Common Core. And I think that, um, you know, it's, it's, it's great to have the Common Core, but I also think we have to make sure that we're addressing the needs of all of our students. And we have um, lots of great programs for children that are 
falling in that failure rate in the MCAS. And I think we should also have programs that address kids that fall into the advanced range as well. And the Common Core, um, it seems like conceptually it's a great idea, but I think that we're going to have to look at the pockets of the various components of it to make sure that in its entirety, it works. Ms. Hennessy. I'm going to ask the same question. Uh, we have a lot of choices here, and you chose JFK for one of your children, and I think two sons go to a private school. Can you explain that decision? Um, my, young, my youngest son, I don't want to get into it too, too much, but um, Smith College Campus School was the best match for him, given his learning and you know, um, academic challenges. And JFK seemed to be a great fit for my oldest son. And <clears throat> I'm lucky that we're able to provide that education for my youngest son. But one of the things that I'd like to do through school committee is I want to make sure that I wouldn't have to spend the resources in order to send my child to, to a school that can address his needs. I wish that that was available to him through the public school system. And I think that's one of the things that can help you know, the entire community. I'd like to follow up on that question. Your older son right now is at JFK. Where did he go to elementary school? He was Smith College campus school as well. Okay. The, the question that I'm asking here then is, so when you got to, he went, how far did he go from? Sixth grade. And what, what age did he start at? Kindergarten. Kindergarten. Okay. Um, ugh, biting my tongue is how to say this tactfully. Um, you don't have to hold back. It's okay, right. great. Do you believe in public education? I, I mean, do. Because if you I didn't, I wouldn't have a son in the system. Okay, I was just wondering if that was kind of by default at that level at JFK once he got there, because a lot of people do transfer that. And we have wonderful elementary schools. And did you check them out? Because you said that your son may have special needs, and I don't want to get into that. However, if you start them in kindergarten, whether or not the public school could address those needs really wasn't tested. So I'm wondering, uh, and both of your sons did it. So to me, it's a philosophical difference as far as whether or not you, your belief in public education and whether it, it's uh, its right. ability to work. Right. I, I, I do believe it has the ability to work. I think it is working for a lot of students. I think it's very child specific. I'm lucky and I'm fortunate that I can afford to send my child to private school and get a different and unique education. But that doesn't mean that that's always the best choice for that particular child. Um, the reason my son's in eighth grade at JFK is because we had confidence in the school system that this would be a good choice. And he started in seventh grade as well. And yeah, it can work. But I also feel like I'm in a, un a unique situation where I can look at the best of both worlds. I can look at best practices that are happening at Smith College Campus School. I also philosophically like the idea of a, of a school that is incubating teachers. I think it's a wonderful thing that Smith College has that ability to offer um, a learning experience for people that want to go into education. And so I'm looking at what their best practices are and seeing how they can be applied at the public school level and vice versa. What are the best practices at public school level that can be applied at the private school level? I'd like to follow this up with a question a little bit different um, um, about transportation. Right now, public education, to me, should be public and free education for all. Right now, we don't have that because we have to pay, the kids have a bus fee. Um, you have the privilege of being able to <coughs> afford whatever it is. How do you feel about the bus, the transportation system, and some of the parents and people in the system have, in the schools, depending on where they live, having the inequity of having to pay to get their children to school. How do you feel about that? I feel it should be equal for everyone. I mean, I happen to be paying for my son's busing, so I know exactly what it feels like, and I go through the same process every time I write a check. But look, there, there has to be a consistency in policy that's fair to everybody. And from my perspective, it seems like it's fair. Do I feel that people should have to pay for busing? No. But if that's the only choice we have because of our budget restraints, then we either have to solve the budget issue and figure out how to put more revenue into the system or advocate for more revenue, or we have to put together these outside solutions that may feel like financial hardships to many families. So is it ideal? No. But the alternative is we've got to figure out how to put more revenue into the system or how to be more efficient with the revenue that we have. Thank you very much. We're, we're, we reached the end of the 10 minute. Do you have a quick okay, question? No question. Okay. Uh, same question I was asked earlier. If elected here tonight, would you be willing to pledge tonight that you would seek the, the full term in 2015? If I'm effective in my role and the citizens of Ward 2 feel that I'm worthy of serving on their behalf, then my intention would be to continue making progress in school committee. Okay. 
Thank you very much, Mr. Foster. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so now we reach the, the uh, final candidate, um, Renee Wettstein. And I'm so glad I didn't take my husband's name in Dietz. <laughs> I feel like I have an advantage of hearing all these questions, but I'll try not to use it to, uh, okay. to anyone. I, I do I appreciate being here. So tell me when I start, David. Is you, it starting right you now? You start and I'll start when you start. Oh, okay. Well, I, I want to thank Jason and, and Laura because this is hard to do, and usually I get to ask questions, so this will be interesting for me. Um, thank you for this opportunity to express my strong desire to be appointed to the school committee. In the summer of 2011, I took out nominating papers and collected signatures for this position. After Andrew, Andrew Shefflow called me, I chose to let him run unopposed since I still had three children at home and was actively involved in the school council and launching the Key Club. <clears throat> now I'm excited to have a chance to complete his term and run for this office in this next election. I'm proud that the Key Club, which I actively advise each week, was recently awarded first place in New England for increased membership and third place for the most service projects. We are now the largest club in the high school. We have developed special relationships with the Survival Center, Safe Passage, Shelter Sunday, Casa Latina, the VA, Whole Children, and Jackson Street School, where we recently held a successful free soccer clinic. I don't just talk about my vision and what I plan to do. I have done it. My oldest son, Daniel Dietz, was born in 1993, the same year when significant education reform was enacted. He was born in Cooley Dickinson Hospital, and in 1996, we moved from East Hampton to North Hampton because of its amazing reputation for educational excellence. My children have had some amazing, dedicated teachers in the city and have been active participants in this community. Daniel sat on this very board as a school representative. Since you've seen my resume, you know that I have been a family attorney for 25 years while raising three boys. My practice is dealing with families in transitions and adoptions. I help clients with their finances. I have also counseled many pregnant teenagers in my adoption work and have been appointed by the court as a guardian ad litem to review trust accounts. But you may not know that my parents both grew up in a low income situations. My mother was an orphan and my father lost his father when he was young. They instilled in me the, hard, the value of hard work, keeping your word, spending thoughtfully, and the importance of education because it can change your life circumstances. I understand that this board approves a budget of over $28 million and that the taxpayers in the community and in Ward 2 want to know that their money is being wisely spent. I have a proven record of experience in school governance and years of hard work in the school system. I have I am able to actively and respectively listen to people with different opinions. I also have the ability to form alliances with people from different backgrounds and with different priorities. After getting to know me, Brian Salser asked me to be on his high school principal selection committee. And before he left for Germany, he asked me to meet with me personally to thank me for all my dedication to the students in the school system. The first item listed on the Massachusetts Association School Committee Code of Ethics is to realize that his or her primary responsibility is to the children. I have personal experience with special education. My son was in the Leeds preschool um, when he was four, three and four years old. Um, it was amazing. Marion Van Arsdale was an amazing um, teacher that I see her every once in a while, and it's great to bump into her. I want all children to thrive, succeed, and be challenged. I want their creativity to be ignited by excellent teachers in an environment that is conducive to learning. I ask to be nominated and for your vote. Thank you. I had that three minute practice. You seem to have experience with three minutes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know where that comes from. Uh, All right, so bring it on. <laughs> okay, so, um, so now again, I'll open the floor to, uh, to the counselors and the school committee uh, for questions uh, for Ms. Wedstein. Uh, Councilor Labarge. Uh, Councilor Labarge. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, this is Weinstein. Maybe you could answer a couple of questions for me, it's the same as I did for uh, Mrs. Bellin. Could you please describe any experience you have or interest in the school budget issues? Yes. Um, you know, I, I started on the school council before uh, my son Daniel started at the high school, and um, that was when Beth Singer was still at the high school. And budget, budget, budget. That's what you do on school councils. And what's what's really interesting is I think that I feel. Um, my candidacy is different and how I stand out from the other two candidates is that I have children that have graduated from the high school and that are in the high school right now. And that's something I think a lot of school committee members um, have younger children. And I know, um, you know the mayor 
and um, Mr. Moore has high school students. But um, you know, what's, what's really challenging in high school, there's, there's a lot of challenges when you have classes that are over 35 kids, some, some of the classes. And I see tonight we're actually going through the different um, the schools and how many kids are in the class. And a lot of the, you know, the kindergartens have 15 kids, which is, again, I'm not asking for it to be bigger. I'm just saying that my role at the school council, we spent a lot of time on budgets and understanding the budgets and trying to advocate for the high school, which might have different you know, issues than the junior high school and the elementary schools. And you know, I think this is for all the children. And you know, all the, I think everyone is here and cares about kids. But we're dealing with, uh, you know, what's interesting is the budget is actually, I wrote it down because I didn't, in my speech, I didn't make it for the three minutes. But it's $28,614,159, you know, to be exact. And so every penny, I think, really counts. And I was talking to Ms. Minnick actually like, earlier today that, you know, do we do a zero budget and we start from the beginning? Because I think budgets are priorities. I mean, I, I deal with, with families in transitions, which is families in divorce. And it's really hard whether there's a job loss or you're dividing um, families that are creating two households. And so it's really about priorities. And I think that's where, you know, I hope that as a discussion, I think what's hard is we get so much information as school committee members, you know, we got it. Just a few days ago, my, my, my younger son was downloading all of them, so it's on my laptop. And there's so much information at you, and how do you, how do you analyze all the information? I think all of us are working people on top of the, being on the school committee. And so how do you, in, you know, in an intelligent way, ask questions that are not going to offend, that are going to be respectful, but I think people in Ward 2 and this, this community, we're all taxpayers, whether you have kids or not, we're all paying taxes. We want to make sure that we're doing it appropriately. Okay, could you also describe any volunteer or other work you have done mm -hmm. in the North Devon Public Schools, including which schools and the kind of help you provided or work you've done? Well, it's interesting. My son started at the Leeds Preschool, now it's at Bridge, Bridge Street Road, so I was very active in you know, getting the snacks and getting involved in and, and that way. Um, and we actually moved to, to be close to Ryan Road, to go to Ryan Road School. And when my son, he, we, was, we were gonna go there, and when my son, um, I, I met with the principal, and my son was on an IEP at that point, and he actually said to me, the principal at the time, we lumped those kids together. So we were still gonna go, but we did apply to Hilltown Charter School, because at that point, this was going back um, in 1998, people said, you know what, it's free, apply. And so to your answer, Blue, you know, in terms of do I believe in public school, it's actually a public charter school. Um, he got in there, and then when the, at that point, the administrator, who they still have the same administrators, called me and said, um, you got in, and there was lottery, like you won this lottery, like waiting for Superman. We, you got in, and I said, well, my son is on an IEP, and she said, that's great. You know, so, and then, so my kids went there, and, um, you know, would I choose differently? I think Ryan Road has a different principle. I think there's a different philosophy. Um, and I think that um, seeing how, the, I think we need to embrace charter schools in a sense they're here. That's what the, you know, education reform did. But there are competition, but they also, part of their objective is to teach us best practices. Why are people going to, driving to, at Hilltown at that point was in a factory. You know, why would I drive to a factory, <laughs> you know, to, to educate my kids? It's because parents could just walk in and volunteer at any time. You know, it was just so open. So when, when my kids were there, I volunteered in the classroom. I did the chaperones. I did all the things that, you know, um, most parents do with their kids. But I also was involved on their board. And, you know, when I got, before my son even got to the high school, I got on the school council. I was there for five years. And then we started a high school key club, which is a, it's the largest international service organization that's student-led. There's 250,000 kids all over. I, I actually, David Narkowitz's both daughters are there. I, I chaperone them in, in Springfield at the Marriott. I love being with students, you know. So I, I just, they're our future. You know, and I love even this, this, this project that we just did with the free clinic, um, soccer clinic, it was teaching a child, a high school student who's actually a senior who takes all these AP classes, how to make a poster. You know, how do you advertise? How are the steps to get something through? And you know, they, they inspire me. Every night I come home Monday night and I'm like, I wish I could do this full time. Because <laughs> I, I, you know, so, you know, that's, that's what I've done. Thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Duvall? Yeah, um, kind of the question that uh, Councillor Carney asked earlier, 
you want to ask it, you can ask me. No, because <laughs> you worded it. <laughs> but okay, you have been, we've seen you within your three minutes, you've been a strong proponent here for the late start time. Mm -hmm. um, within the position of being in the school committee, it, it has issues. I mean, you've been here for that. I try and figure out how to ask. How do you come to terms with what your community, Ward 2, would want and your own personal beliefs because you have been a very strong, staunch proponent? Well, it's interesting. This, I mean, this board, 72, <coughs> you know, voted in, in actual <coughs> policy. That's the superintendent. So, you know, Ward 2, you know, was very supportive of, of the later start time. So, I, you know, I wasn't in opposition. Um, you know, what do I do with people that are in opposition that seven years that I worked on this issue? And Brian Salsa was the number one, it's not my priority. And but before he left to Germany, he's like, I wish I could change the school start time. So I think we all care about the school start time. I think every time we presented it, you know, the issue has always been we believe in the research, we understand where it's coming from, how do we make it work? And I think it's great that, you know, Downey, you know, it's, it was finally taking attendance. This is something six years ago I asked, can we take attendance on the buses? I actually called the Chicago bus company because I've sat, you know, we're talking about budgets. I was the only parent, non-paid person, when we did the, bu the buses um, for the bids. I was the only, Joy Winnie, I was there, Joe Cook, you know, and I wrote down all the numbers furiously and I tried to understand the busing. And so I'm glad they're finally taking attendance. It's free to do it. Six years ago I said, in my three minutes, can we just take attendance? Can we just take attendance? And I was told it doesn't matter how many kids are on the bus. But we have sometimes, we have some buses, six kids are on the bus, and that's what we're talking about budgets. So, um, you know, if there's a personal issue that I believe in, that my constituents don't believe in, that's, I'm not here for, for Renee Wetstein. I'm here for all the kids. And if there was a, if, if the people were not in favor of something, I would not, I would not personally sit here and not represent my ward. Okay, 67% approximately are not in favor of the um, late start time, that's what we've had. Where, where are you getting this, I mean, um, from students? Two out of three don't support it, one out of three do from the students, from the faculty, from all the facts that we've been having all the way through, approximately, I mean, around that. Well, that's why I came last month in my mm -hmm. three minutes to talk about <laughs> Um, are there other options? Can we make first period optional? I talked to the superintendent. He was talking about having potentially in holier through night classes. You know, can kids take an MIT class online? Can kids take a class at Stanford? I have a good friend that teaches at Stanford. You know, those are free options for kids. So other alternatives, because there are 33% of people that do want it and 50%, you know, kids are falling asleep in classrooms. So this board, we went through that, you know, so this right, board but what I'm asking you, too. the question I'm asking you is, yeah. yes, I agree in, that you are a very strong advocate for it. You have all of those reasons. I agree with the reasons personally. Mm -hmm. However, the community behind you, the majority of them doesn't. So my original question, which is why I wish that Ms. Carney would ask it, because she did it better, <laughs> asked it better, but my original question was that. So if I was voting if the community does not support the late start time, then when I vote in and you actually, I would, I would, and I'm not asking you what your vote will be. I'm just okay. saying, how do you come to terms with the the community wanting something and then you? Well, what's what's what I, I think that what's interesting about that question is that I am very approachable. I mean, even though I'm an attorney and I, you know, I. I can be intimidating when I'm cross-examining someone. People come up to me all the time, you know, whether it's at the YMCA, the yoga class, I'm the loudest person there. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm just approachable. And so I, it would be education. And it's hearing, you know, there was someone that was very opposed against school start time because their daughter took ballet at 3 o'clock in Amherst. And that was something Nancy Nathis and I worked on. I mean, Nancy Nathis and I, you know, worked on this issue. So if there's something personally that I'm opposed, would I vote, you know, if it's some moral code, I still have a moral code, but, you know, I would not push an issue that was not something that m my ward did not want. Thank you. Mr. Meyer. Um, yeah. So we, we talk quite often at the school committee about what education should be in Northampton and about what components are necessary. And come budget time, a lot of times that conversation carries over into priorities and choices about in times of cutting what gets cut first. So I wonder if you could talk about your experience with Key Club and service projects, which I know that the school committee member sitting next to me has been a proponent of service learning and making that, you know, making that part of the necessary curriculum rather than something that's considered additional. And, and maybe how that interaction with each other in pursuit of service is 
informs the rest of their education and their development as people. But I mean, I, I, it, it's interesting. There's other high schools like East Long Meadow has a 20-hour requirement to do community service. The Northampton um, Honor Society has a 20-hour requirement. You're not elected to be on the on National Honor Society until your second semester of your junior year. And then the kids show up to Key Club and are like, can you sign my form? Um, so, you know, it's, there are some kids that, that are born to do community service. And it's probably because they're families and they're, they're pushed to do it. And they, they, they do things with their, their parents and their friends. And they like it. And, and there are some kids that show up. We have 70 kids that show up every Monday night. And there's some that are just flirty and they just want to hang. And, you know, and they're there to build a resume or their parents told them to be there. But once they do a project, I was on the bike path with the kids. You know, in, in September, it was a beautiful sunny day. We had bags of stuff, and they were just enjoying it, you know, believe it or not. We, we were getting, you know, alcohol bottles, and they were getting, we had uh, snakes in a bag. And we, I mean, it was just insane. And then afterwards, I went to Stop and Shop, and I, I told the manager what we did, and they gave us little uh, cupcakes, you know, and, and cider. And we came out, and we hung out, you know. So it's doing, you know, and I think there's teachers like, one of the teachers, Dan Moreland, who's a science teacher, he was a key clubber. I've been trying to get him to advise it, but he keeps on having kids. But uh, you know, he's very into it. So he will he will induce his children to do it by getting an extra point. And if you take his biology class, um, but once they start doing it, they did the ice challenge and they made you know they raised four hundred dollars this class. So it's really t having people on board and doing it. And there's a lot of people in this community that want to volunteer. I don't get paid to advise the key club. So we've. Come to the close, I th although I think Councillor Murphy is going to ask his Oh, just final. that quick question. If you're successful tonight, will you run for this position? You weren't listening to my speech. That was the first thing <laughs> she <I> said. <laughs> that, yes, I took out nominating papers. I was going to do this. Andrew Shuffle called me. He said, I know your wife. He really sold me on himself. And, and I said, you're going to do it again. And I'm going to And I'm here. I'm here to stay. Right. You're going to so be I'm back run again. a year from now. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes, I'm in it for the long haul. Okay, so that concludes our, our question and answer uh, with Ms. Westine. And so that concludes um, our portion of the meeting uh, dedicated to hearing from the candidates. Uh, now, um, are there any further questions that the counselors have about the process? Essentially, what I'll be doing is um, asking the clerk to call a roll call vote uh, we have to do nominations. So. That's true. We will do nominations. We'll do <coughs> Florida nominations, but and then you'll be asked to vote on um, each. Uh, you'll be basically asked to call out the name of the person that you support for the position. Um, so, with any questions about that process when we get to it. So, at this point, then I would open the floor to nominations, and I would ask uh, Ms. Hennessy. I'd like to nominate Laura Fallon. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay. So there's been a motion made and seconded, so that person is nominated. Are there other nominations? Oh, excuse me. Okay, I'd like to um, nominate Renee Westing. Okay, and seconded. Okay. Um, are there any other nominations? I'll uh, nominate Jason Foster. Okay, is there a second? Second. Second, okay. So um, there are all three candidates have been nominated. We'll and move to close nominations. Okay. Second. So all those in favor of closing nominations, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. So we have three candidates before us. Uh, again, the names are Laura Fallon, Jason Foster, and Renee Wettstein. And I would ask uh, Ms. Judd to call the roll call. And again, each uh, person upon hearing your name called, please state the name of the candidate that you support for this position. Mr. Jesse Adams. Renee Wettstein. Ms. Maria Kearney. Laura Fallon. Uh, Mr. William Drake. Laura Fallon. Uh, Ms. Elisa Klein. Laura Fallon. Ms. Marianne Labarge. <clears throat> um, Renee Wettstein. Mr. David Murphy. Ms. Wettstein. Mr. Ryan O'Donnell. Laura Fallon. Ms. Gina Louise Sciarra. Laura Fallon. Uh, Ms. Bluteball. Ms. Pam Hanna. Laura Fallon. Ms. Ann Hennessy. Laura Fallon. Mr. Downey Meyer. Renee Westing. Ms. Lisa Vidic. Laura Fallon. Mr. Howard Moore. Renee Westing. 
we've actually reached, um, I mean, we can finish the voting, but we have, we have reached. Um, Mayor David Narkowitz. Renee Wetstein. Ms. Karen Fortune. Renee Wetstein. And Mr. Edward Pappas. Laura Fallon. Ten in favor of Laura Fallon. Okay. So uh, Ms. Fallon has been formally appointed to the uh, school committee representing Ward 2. Congratulations. And um, actually, if you would come forward, uh, I would ask the city clerk to come forward and administer the oath of office. Before we do that, I, I want to congratulate all of you for coming forward to serve your community. As I think one of you said, all of you would be able uh, persons to fill this position. And, um, and we thank you both, uh, Mr. Foster and Ms. Wedstein, for coming forward uh, to seek this position. And so now I would ask the city clerk to come forward. Don't go far. For a meeting. <laughs> you had a meeting in a few Joining minutes. us. I'm on a motion to adjourn. Yeah. So if I could um, have a motion to adjourn. To adjourn. Tonight. I'll second the motion. This made a motion made and seconded. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? This joint session is now adjourned. <laughs>